And that different looks like community building. That difference does look like a community garden. That difference does look like starting services and helping those around the community, checking up on grandpa, babysitting my uh, next door neighbor's child. This is these type of things because, hey y'all, welcome to another and the last session of Paint Your True Self-Care Process Painting Workshop. Um, so it's December 27th. I felt like I haven't done one of these in a very long time, but um, let us clear the energy first with Sage, and then we're going to do an inhale and an exhale. I'm going to give the little spiel about how process painting works, and then um, I'll get into some updates. Cool? Cool. So... And hopefully you had a really, really good holidays. Whatever you celebrate, hopefully it was eventful. If you don't celebrate, that's okay too. But let's clear out this energy, this room. Let us be in our highest vibration, remove the self-doubt, any um, imposter syndrome or any stresses because the holidays can be stressful the end of the year. Let us be in our highest vibration. Let us be in our most uh, highest of esteems and let us be able to be focused on our self-care, our wellness, our mental health and what our body needs, as well as to get into our self-care practices. Now... Let's do an inhale and an exhale with the singing bowl. We're gonna do this three times. So, let me put this here. <clears throat> so, process painting. So, uh, process painting is a form of uh, self-care as well as it's a form of art therapy. Process painting is very much being mindful about what you need and painting that and visualizing it, right? Oftentimes, we're in our heads about a lot of things, life, work, um, family, everything and anything in between right but we're not in our heads when it comes to what we need and how we need it and what it means to us and with process painting it's all about asking yourself how do you practice your self-care how do you give back to yourself how do you prioritize yourself and with paint your truth self-care process painting we do that in regards to what is self-care what is wellness to the individual person because everybody has their own style everybody has an answer to what makes them happy what gives them joy what gives them um wellness so with these process painting workshops I provide all the materials, the canvases, the paints, the paint brushes, and all that jazz. Only thing the participant has to do is show up and be willing to participate in this shared experience. So that is in the gist of process painting. I do these workshops all over the Massachusetts area. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely um, reach out to me via email at paintyourtruth.art at gmail.com everything will be in the description box down below but that is just a process painting it's really just asking yourself in visual form kind of like a vision board of sort but for your wellness about like what does self-care means to me some people's answer is oh i ski or i like jogging and some people's like you know i like word searches right some people they're into bird watching whatever it is and really getting into those feelings that bring up your highest vibration when you're participating in these activities. Like when was the last time you went skiing and really, really enjoyed yourself, not worrying about like how much time you have left and then the traffic back home, like you were just in the present, in the moment. And as people are painting what self-care means to them, they kind of have nostalgia of that experience and they put in details. I've seen different people's portraits and they all look different, of course, because we all 
paint differently, but also you could tell by the texture. You could tell by the person's personality. If they like adrenaline rush or if they're more like, I like to cruise and take my time. That is the gist of process painting. And then when everybody is done with their paintings for an hour to an hour and a half of painting, we come back as a collective and we share what we have painted, how it made us feel, and then how we're going to integrate whatever the finishing result of what self-care means to the individual, what they're showing the portrait, how are they going to incorporate that into their lives, whatever that image is, right? So now that I explained process painting and all that jazz, as you can see, we already have a canvas that has been completed, which I did do uh, a video painting this portrait. But in essence, this portrait is kind of like a galactic being. I'm starting to get into creating more lifelike images, more, I guess you can say bodily images, which is like what? But usually I paint scenic, right? And now I'm incorporating like figures that look, you know, like beings. And I'm not really good at hands yet, so this is why this little mommy doesn't have hands. <laughs> but also, I like just the body, like the woman's body. So I was taking my time putting in the details with this particular portrait's body. And I combined two self-care cards to uh, make this portrait. One of the cards is also this outlined, and it's like a woman's waist as she's like, lying back or about to lie back that curvature of the back and then this would also be her like buttocks i try to give it a little bit more detail so like make it seem more bootylicious besides peenlicious with the waist beads but we're gonna enhance it this is what i'm gonna do with this particular portrait i'm gonna make it pop up art i have a dried paint in this plastic baggie zip bag i have the glue stick here it's already plugged in and hot and ready to go some scissors i have the materials needless to say so i'm going to give it a little bit of a pop-up to it i'm going to enhance some places and other places i'm going to leave as b but um this is the essence of this particular depiction um i don't necessarily have a name for it and if i did, I don't remember it, huh? So I'm not gonna give it a particular name, but I, I wanna give it more of like a 3D effect. I did something similar with a particular portrait um, I did as a process painting workshop. It's on this channel, check it out. And it looks like this, and this is dried up paint, some tin foil, um, and it gives it more of a va va voom, at least in my opinion. And I like pop up art. I was one of them kids who liked to pop up books. It was giving me 3D bringing things into life. That's something similar I'm gonna do with. Obviously, with the color schemes that fit the portraits. So, there's that. So. Now that we have gotten that out of the way, hopefully y'all have been practicing your self-care, your mindfulness, putting your mental health first because that très on matters, especially around these times, as well as um, hopefully all has been well in your life. Um, I've been practicing my mental health a lot more lately. I've been very mindful of that. I take salt baths, which is also known as spiritual baths, at least twice a week. And I feel like doing that really helps me like be mindful of my body, like noticing what aches, noticing what is sore, noticing what makes me feel more relaxed. And it's interesting because oftentimes people will be like, relax, and so you can relax. And then you're thinking about like, oh my God, am I relaxing? Like, how can I relax? And then everything but relaxing is going through your mind. And by the time time is up, you're like, wow, that was more stressful than I thought it would be. And it was one of those type of things where it's just like, once I got into the routine of doing salt baths, it didn't feel like I was trying to get relaxed as opposed to it's just a routine of things. So that's what I've been incorporating into my uh, self care. Um, I don't know if in the last uh, Paint Your Truth process painting session on this channel, that I um, told y'all that I went to a Friendsgiving, but I did that. 
Um, two weeks ago, me and a couple of uh, my friends, we went to the Boston Ballet and we saw the Nutcracker and that was très amazing. So yes, uh, we went uh, maybe like a week or two before Christmas. And yeah, we went to the Boston Ballet. It was really, really pretty. Um, we got really decent seats, which I was excited about. It was at the uh, Citizens Bank Opera House, right? um in that downtown area and we had really good seats and i didn't know if we were gonna get in child i was like this is hot tickets okay this is uh one of the seasons you know best selling shows i was like i don't know but i'm gonna see if i can work my magic work some strings see what happens and it did and we enjoyed ourselves the theme for us was um black and bougie it was it was black and bougie yes it was black and bougie and it was like whatever bougie means to you bougie could be like uptight like um if you're old enough to know this reference but um a different world if you're more of a whitley gilbert type of bad and bougie then cool if you're the bad and bougie who's like more like contemporary meg the stallion then that's cool or if you're like bad and bougie and you're more like erica badu mama earth that's cool whatever you're decision of bad and bougie that's what we wanted and that's what we came and we gave and um the whole experience was really really good like it, it was cute because usually it's funny because you think nutcracker you think for kids but it's a lot of adults who go see this so like it's technically for adults but like has a childish undertone and there were kids there of course but um the performers made it a point to be childish where it fit they made sure to make it child friendly in a sense of like when they were doing their uh ballet they they had like a childish like animation way of doing it so the kids would like really enjoy the bear being the bear and the mice being the mice and it gave it a lot of life and they were phenomenal from the swan queen everything all the production the bear uh, which was hilarious. I feel like the bear played multiple roles as well. Everybody played their part. Everybody made it fantastic. If I had the means and the time, I would have gone a second time. It's something I really wanted to do because I remember um, my first time actually going to the Boston Ballet, which wasn't at the Citizens Bank Opera House. It was some time long ago, like we're talking about like early 2000s, like late 90s, early 2000s. So this is a long time ago. I remember I went with my former school in my class and um, it was such a beautiful experience. I remember it was so grand. Like not only the building we were in, but like the production, it was so capturing. And like, I remember the classical. Like all of that, right? So I remember how like, I thought it was just the bee's knees. And I was just like, I wish, I could be able to do this once I become an adult. Like I wish I, I would be able to do this. And every year around this time, I'd be like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Don't ever do it. And these tickets are pretty expensive as well. So the opportunity came and I, I took it and I'm so glad I took it. It was a marvelous experience, Boston Ballet, but just, just see it in general. I like ballet, again, tickets are pretty expensive. But um, when I get the opportunity, I'm going to go to the ballet. Um, something I've never done was opera. I'm into opera too. I'll do opera if the opportunity ever falls into my lap. But um, definitely do that. What are some traditions that you do for the holidays? Like do you bake cookies? Do you do a family like potluck? Or, or do you do like one person or one family does the designated cooking and everybody else comes? And like, if you celebrate anything, like what do you celebrate and how do you celebrate it? See, I grew up um, Jehovah's Witness. So we didn't celebrate anything. And it's interesting because even as an adult, I don't really celebrate anything. And even though I'm not a practicing Jehovah's Witness, I still don't practice anything. And it's interesting because you know how people make such a big deal about their birthday and make such a big deal about the holidays and make such a big deal about coming together? For me, it's very blasé because I don't have those experiences. So 
even though I can and like I have the friends giving, so I'm not opposed to, but I don't, I don't find the sensation of like the holiday, I guess you can say magic, but I do love me some corny Christmas movies. I absolutely do. Um, I definitely love seeing movies such as like Home Alone. So that is my thing. And I have been watching some corny Christmas movies, all the Hallmark love coming together. We're getting engaged, family fun, like all that. That is up my alley, definitely. I was raised religious, so uh, extremely religious, as opposed to like traditional Christianity people, most Christians, regardless of like Baptist or Protestant or Mormon or whatever, they celebrate Christmas. Jehovah's Witnesses don't. So I never grew up doing such, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, all the major holidays, even 4th of July, even my own birthday. So once I let go of that, um because i was grown enough to do so <laughs> i just uh just did not celebrate holidays but i do celebrate my birthday but i have never went all out and one day i want to do one of those all out like it's my birthday celebrate me type of thing interestingly enough god willing i would love to spend my 30th geatric millennial as they say my 30th birthday in bali god willing oh that would be gorgeous but um yeah did y'all do anything in particular did you have the family because you know with the uh, testing the new variant you know the drill you know people some people were advised not to travel some people didn't some people did regardless to regardless to regardless to what um did you have family over or did you play it safe i really watched this a uh, really good movie it was so beautiful it was a british one of those lovesick you know holiday coming together type of movies um twin flame but now we're soulmate type of things it, i forgot what the name is but it was a british jamaican um one and it was so beautiful the cinematography the acting the british accents the one they got like all of that all of that all of that i loved it the movie is called boxing day and it was made in 2021 this year and it's a christmas movie Aja King from How to Get Away with Murder, Michaela, she is the main woman in that movie. To give you some insight, I don't remember where I watched it from, but definitely look out for it. It's really, really dope. No cap. Um, and then, what, two days ago, I started getting into the show Claws from um, TNN, which... I guess now that I'm into it, they decided they want to cancel. <laughs> they, I guess, aired their final season this year, but I discovered them like two days ago. So I've been binge watching since discovering that particular show. And it's interesting. I'm not going to say it's the best written material out there, but it is interesting. It does keep my focus and my uh, humor, definitely humor. Is there any shows that you would recommend? Is there anything that you're into? I'm not necessarily picky about what shows that I watch, but I'm not gonna hold you. I don't watch a lot of shows. And then when I do find like the interest to watch what other people are watching, that's when, just like Claws, they have been canceled or they're just not airing a new season. I'm just like, oh, once again, I'm late to party. <laughs> And part of me is like, because I think they're so um, overrated, I'm just kind of like, I don't think it's just, just that great. And sometimes it's just like, I'm not even checking for it. And then I'm like, oh, I remember that this show was on like three years ago. Let me, I guess, get around to watching it. And by the time I get around to watching it, um, it's no longer on. And I feel like that's a common thing now where people are just so overwhelmed with life that they don't have time to like 
really sit there and watch TV shows as the seasons are unraveling. Like each week, week, yeah, each week, <laughs> there'd be a new episode, like episode one, episode two, episode three. People don't really have the time to really be sitting here and watching TV. And I think that's why certain apps like TikTok are popular because there's short formed videos, but also because our attention span is as long as a hamster, but also because we're always on the go because we live in such a automated, itemized, fast, 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 produce, produce, produce society. We just don't have the time to sit there and really um, value and take in and soak in new information because we're always on the go. We don't have time to sit down, literally. There's people who don't even have time to spend with their kids because they're always on the go and they feel guilty for that. But we live in capitalism. I mean, capitalism is not sparing any of its ghoulish plans because the earth is um, literally on fire. And rest in peace to those who lost their lives during that tornado. Because Amazon said, hey, productivity. We're living in late stage capitalism. And I know I'm not trying to peak anybody's um, mental health or make anybody feel like gloom and doom or anything. But I wouldn't be myself if I just was not honest or I acted as if everything is uh, back to normal, so to speak. I just want to be honest, like, and be not only just honest and frank, but also share the message of you're not alone. I feel like a lot of people feel as if they are alone and they can't rely on, on anybody. And when they are having inconvenient thoughts and intrusive thoughts and Let's be honest, TMI, but I got to let you know, trigger warning, um, suicide ideations, like if they feel as if they are alone and they don't know that they are not, they don't know that there's other people who are equally looking for friendship, companionship, support, or even like information, how to undo certain things, how to collectivize, how to um, even do things such as mutual aid. If they aren't spoken about, people are really going to believe that they are the only ones going through this. And then it has the energy of despair where it's just like no one understands. And I promise you, more people understand than you think, especially the way the economics are set right now. Literally 85% of Americans understand how you feel because 85% of Americans are going through the same thing. So don't feel guilty. Don't feel inferior. Don't feel anything because we're all going through it and we're all trying to figure out a way out, so to speak. So that's my little spiel. Ah, but are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited for the new year? <laughs> the new year. The new year is less than a week away. This is the 27th. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. By the time, this time Sunday, we will be saying 2022, which is crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's 2022. I feel like 2022 is, I'm putting it out there in the atmosphere. I feel like 2022 is going to be very, very positive. Not just for me, but for the collective in general. You know I do tarot. You know part of my video and my content on this channel is about tarot. So if you're curious, definitely check it out. I do feel like 2022 is going to bring a whole lot of hard truths where people are going to have to collectivize because literally we are all we have. So there is no need to culture vulture, culture war, pin each other against each other because we're literally harming ourselves if we harm each other. We're literally harming our ability to be stable, to be communal, to be in community. It's, it's like... Am I not my brother's keeper? Am I not my sister's keeper? It's one of that energies of I am because we are, therefore I am. There is no me without us. We are all one. That's some human consciousness because, again, let's be honest, global warming is happening whether we want to admit it or not. And it's the young who inherit the earth, who inherit what has been left behind. And what are we going to inherit when there is nothing to preserve so i feel like a lot of people especially my generation of people are just kind of like we can't sit idly by while some people pretend like what is is not 
and um, we need to make sure that this earth is not only here for us, but those of us who do decide to have children, what are they going to inherit? You know, we cannot continue to work like robots because we are not robots. We're seeing how that is literally affecting our mental health, hence the great resignation. But we're also figuring out, okay, what do we replace the system with? Because yes, the system is failing and the system is not working for us, but also what, what next? We have to envision past this. It can't just be, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Yes, it's not working and we can all agree we hate it, but what next? We have to envision the what next as we say and we see and we visualize the what is, you know? Because oftentimes people have grand ideas, which are great, but they don't think about how to execute it. So they sit on the grand ideas. I feel like 2022 is very much the time of execution. You just cannot sit on the ideas and you cannot wait for somebody else to come up with the ideas. As well as gonna show a lot of people like what people's true characters are. What do they truly stand on? What are their true principles? A lot of people are going to see what is and what is not especially when it comes to systems of things, people of things, morals of things. People won't be able to deny things and people won't be able to shut their eyes and pretend everything is quote unquote back to normal. People will of course attempt to, but every time they try to play like everything's back to normal is going to reinforce that it is not. So people cannot be under the illusion, delusion, confusion of quote unquote, everything is okay. So it's going to empower, force, or even scare people into like action, being about that action, that collectivizing, that we are literally all we have. It's interesting because I've been seeing in my head the image of, if you're a 90s baby, remember um, Hey Arnold? And do you remember when Hey Arnold had that movie where he was saving his community from those... Um, those property, I guess you can say, soon to be or wanna be owners. And they were gonna uh, buy up Arnold's block and then turn them into like luxury condos. And somehow, some way, Helga Petaski, um, Arnold's arch enemy, but also Arnold's like secret stalker who actually really likes him, but picks on him in real life, but like loves him in a weird, sick, twisted, codependent way behind those doors, literally with a shrine. But um, Hella's dad was going to benefit off of basically him selling off the community. And it took the community to come together and be like, F this shit. I don't know why I said F, then I just ended up saying shit, whatever. So they were just like, fuck this shit. And we're gonna protect our community and we're gonna do everything in our powers to push off gentrification like they were literally talking about gentrification in a child's movie uh, uh tv show and they made it very clear what it was and why it was bad <laughs> but that's 90s programming i don't think programming today does what the magic of the 90s did for my generation but yeah it just taught like the importance of community coming together and saving their block saving their homes and as you can see with housing shortages housing shortages you're seeing with you know homelessness increasing especially in major cities from coast to coast you're seeing that that's a major major issue that's a major major crisis because our basic needs is housing maslow's hierarchy of needs we need housing to be healthy and whole individuals i'm outlining her shoulder but i don't know if i want to go inside with uh, the dried paint because I don't know if it's going to be too boxy. I don't want to give that appearance, but I do want to give it like a separation and distinguish that the body is not the same as the outline. Like there is some type of like shadowing aspect, like they're not singular. There is a pop up effect, so to speak. There is a shadow, there's a lift. Do you have any 
goals or ideas or insights or even what do they call it new year's resolutions or ideas of or predictions guesses of what 22 is going to give for you definitely leave your comments down below do you ever do like predictions or even bet on it i would not advise a bet on it because time is always changing the future is always being determined we do create our futures what are decisions we make now build the future that we ultimately live in so me personally i would not necessarily make sure hard line bets but if you do what do you think and have your predictions ever really came true again i don't do that but not because it's like da, 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 like something wrong if you do i just don't and, and as well like i'll make a prediction and i'll remember it for like the first two weeks and by the end of february i don't even remember that i made predictions so like there's no point i'm not even gonna remember that i made predictions <laughs> As well as, I don't know where you're from, but on Christmas and Christmas Eve, Troop Troop is like for three days, it was raining extra, extra, extra hard in Massachusetts where I live. I don't know if anything like that has been going on where you live, especially if you live in the Northeast, like New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, those areas. Definitely leave your comments below because that's kind of weird, right? Especially there's been like hardly any snow, like two days, maybe two weeks ago, it snowed, but it was like, snow it was sprinkles literally like you literally couldn't even leave a footprint like it was just so shallow and though i am a may baby and i do prefer summer i do prefer a spring i do prefer summer i do prefer spring i'm not into the cold but i have to admit i am from massachusetts born and raised I know it's supposed to be cold and there's supposed to be snow. Even if it's not huge, like blackout. Well, we never really had a blackout, blizzard. Not of recent, but like, even if it's not even to that extreme where they have to cancel school, there's supposed to be something, something on the floor by now. And what I've seen is mostly rain. And if it's not rain, the snow is literally as heavy as a powdered donuts. It's not anything and i'm just kind of like i don't know people are very scared especially well not scared i feel like that was hyperbolic but worried maybe even nervous because of climate change they're like oh geez like is there going to be so much snow is it going to be really cold and snowy is it going to give us like an avalanche of snow and i'm just like i don't know if that's my theory i think my theory might be it's really really cold wind wise but there's not a lot of snow Cause that's what I'm seeing. And though, again, I do not like the snow. I'm not a snow, I'm not a winter baby. I know where I live. I know what the seasons are supposed to look like. Even though Massachusetts seems to really not have seasons, it just goes to cold real quick and just like warmth and then just cold. But there is seasons. We do get the spring, we do get the fall, we do get the winter, we do get the summer. However, we haven't got much snow, so I feel like my prediction is, is it's going to be really, really cold because you can hear the wind howling, okay? I feel like it's going to be cold. We're going to feel the coldness, but there's not going to be snow. And I did talk to a scientist about this. We are in, in the same social circle. And I asked him, like, um, is it worse to have no snow but a whole lot of wind? Or is it better to have the snow and like medium wind like there's wind but it's now howling and banging on things and he was like the snowness does protect against the whipping of the wind but if it's just like winds and no snow it is colder and like you're not having that shield of protection because of the snow because that's was ultimately my question i was like which one's colder like is it like scientifically true that the snow helps like mitigate some of that wind i guess you can say whiplash and he was like yeah so i feel like it's gonna be cold as bricks but there's not gonna be much snow which is obviously effing up the global climate 
But also, I'm wondering how cold it's going to be, especially because people are losing their homes, because people are going homeless, because it's super expensive to live. Like, most people cannot survive on a minimum wage. And that's horrible to say that in a country like the United States. But um, a lot of people are, just, are trying to make ends meet. And it's like a lot of people are barely holding by. So with climate change being so cold as is, I don't know how many people are going to be able to survive winter on the streets, especially since we're going into January, very, very cold. Going into February, extremely cold. I don't, I don't know. And these are the things that we're going to be facing in 2022. For those of y'all who got student loans like me, President Biden has put a second pause, which nobody saw that coming because we were sure that President Biden was going to continue um, with student loan repayments that he put on pause since the pandemic. And most people weren't even able to pay off or even pay, make repayments to their student loans before the pandemic. After the pandemic, where a lot of people lost their jobs, um, a lot of people are unemployed or underemployed or their mental health is in shambles and they have resigned, um, they don't have the funds to repay. If they couldn't repay before the pandemic, we certainly, during what seems like a recession and inflation in the grocery stores, we definitely do not have the funds to pay now. So when he put a stop to it, a lot of people were like, yay. But also people were like, they're just delaying what inevitably is going to happen where people are going to default because they cannot afford to pay. They do not work enough hours. They don't make enough money. They Or they're unemployed, you know? So it's a lot out here. It's a lot out here. And I get it. I understand it. And I'm, I'm in solidarity. gentle when you're trying to like get the excess glue off from like the canvas like I'm doing here excess glue because you don't want to rip or cause a hole onto your canvas because that would kind of make things challenging to say the least so that's what I'm mindful of. If I have to re-glue a piece, I will re-glue a piece rather than cause a hole. Because that would be upsetting to me. Just tips if you decide to do this. Voila.
out of the brown. So what am I going to do is either use the gold or the purple. If I go with the purple, it's going to be very much chakra tease, as you can see on her chest. I might just highlight it as I like she is in meditation, she is like astral projecting, she is in her own zone and mindfulness. Or I could go with gold because you know I can do anything gold. Gold is my color. But I feel like her body's already golden. She's living her life like she's golden and her skin is golden. So skin like gold and teeth like that is like <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to overdo it with the gold. As you can see, there's gold stars. Like, let's let's you know tone it down. So I think I'm just gonna go with the purple and keep it copacetic with the chakras. I didn't know it was gonna twist nicely if it's going, you know, break or if it was going to curve weirdly, but okay. I didn't have to cut it to pieces, but now we have access, so let's see if we can trim the access glue. Like I said, I did get into the show Claws. Girl, it's an interesting show because it's like hyperbolic, but also like aspects of reality and aspects of like universal humanness, like our universal insecurities, our universal um, kind of like dark night of the soul like our universal like this is just a human experience regardless of gender regardless of race but I, I I do like it but sometimes I'm just like come on come on come on and there's other times I'm just like oh my goodness this shit is crazy <laughs> but I'm here for it okay everybody has a right to tell their story how they see fit um but there was a part where they had Moesha's mama again if, if you old enough to remember they had Moesha's mama playing a Haitian accent I said Moesha come get your mammy like Moesha 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 so we're doing this again we're still doing butchered Haitian accents and I'm like look this show looks like it is filmed in Florida Miami Florida at that you couldn't get no Haitian mommies no Haitian aunties in Florida Miami girl so I was just kind of like, that was slightly trash ass. But the part where she had herself um, damn near in, in a pitiful complex with her son when she was eating those strawberries, I said gross. But I also said, no cap. That is literally the relationship Haitian men have with their mother. No cap, no cap, no cap. And I feel like I could say that as a Haitian American. Like, 
their relationship with their parents, their mothers in particular. The sons and mothers are damn near incestuous. I said it. I meant it. We're moving on. But that was one part I was like, screw Accurate, but weird and gross. <laughs> but other aspects of the show was interesting too. <sighs> the main guy, Roland. Roland is cute, but till like all the way through like season one and like season two episode like to one or two well it's just like there's something about Roland besides the character that I don't like but there's something about the character I just don't know what it is like there's a name for it I'm not sure what is the name what is the name and I'm like oh he's a wigger and I was like yeah yeah killed my vibe I was like you're cute you're cute like in the face and everything but the 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 character's just not doing it for me like what is that it's just inauthentic like what it, what is that like like there's something about it it's just like yes it's a character but it's not just the character it's just something very disingenuous and then I was just like oh he's a wigger and I was like yeah that's what it is I'm not interested I'm not interested. I'm not interested. So I was like, it's kind of hard watching Roland because he's still fine. But like, now I'm like, he's, she's a wigger. And I'm just like, yeah, he, he's a wigger. <laughs> like, like there's no doubt about it. Like that's definitely the role he is here to play. Like I can't, I cannot lie. And it actually killed my mind. I'm trying to figure out if I do want to do more to the stars or I just want to let it as, as be as is. And I'm also figuring out should I outline the buttocks, which makes sense that I should. But I'm thinking if I should really do it or does it just make sense. But my question is do I want to outline it or not? And I'm leaning more towards no, but there's a part of me that's like you should. It's weird. But anyways, like that that was my remark on um Roland. It can roll on by. Um and no cap, I really do believe back in those days, well not those days because it's pretty contemporary, but back in the days where men could be that outwardly misogynistic and everybody pretends like this is normal, this is acceptable, this is cute. Um, I really do believe not too long, like the 1800s yeah give it give it like the late 1800s where people were still wearing those atrocious wigs and the get up and no this is my town and you know the, the horseback riding and all that cowboyness i do believe those type of men who were just so overtly toxic toxic masculinity did have a boy toy like that i do believe I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> Executive decision. I'm going to leave it like that because I'm just looking at it and I'm not really making a decision if I should or if I should not. I'm just looking at it like, huh. And I'm getting like, if you're into looking at and gazing at art where you just sit there and you watch it and you let like your mind unravel. And that's what's happening. I'm looking at it and letting my mind unravel, which is great. Um, it's a form of meditation where you're not trying to control your thoughts. You're just letting things free fall. But then I'm just like, I'm not making a decision as opposed to just admiring the art. So the executive's decision is this is all, this is it. Let me see something real quick. I want to cut a little bit. I don't know if you ever caught yourself just like, I guess you could say what they call La La Land, I guess. Whatever that means, if you've heard that term growing up as a kid, you're in La La Land. I guess that's when, you know, you, you let your brain roam. You're not here. You're daydreaming or whatever. So that's what's happening. So, which is great. But um, I think we can wrap the video if this is that. And I don't think I said it in the beginning, but if you do practice any religious ceremonies, hopefully all that went well in the past uh, days or the last time I left y'all. So, yeah. I think that's all. I, I, I said what I hoped for the year to come, but this is what I have. Um, let's do an inhale and an exhale three times with a singing bowl. I'll tell you what I have popped out and for what reason did I decided to pop it out 
And then um, I guess I'll wrap up not only this video, but the end of the year. Sheesh. And voila. Let's do inhale, exhale. What I have enhanced with this particular portrait is um, what we see here, right? Um, with this particular portrait, I created this line, give or take, like two months ago. And um, again, like I said, I shuffled some cards, two cards fell out, and I wanted to know what was the self-care for that day. I usually do my self-care routines on the weekend because it gives me the space to do so. well as I have a legitimate deck that is geared towards self-care in practice. This is the deck and let's see if I could find the cards that were um, inspired by this particular portrait. I might end up doing in the I guess next year, in the next year, um, which is in a couple of days. The end of this weekend will literally be next year. I'm gonna end up doing a painting on this particular drink T number 21 but for this particular um inspiration let me see if i can find the cards were other cards in this deck and um i actually did what the card suggested but also it really allowed me to get back into myself it's it's interesting because when you're young like let's say a child you really do think you have all the time in the world you really do think your body is um that's one of the cards sex has the outlined of the booty um you really do think like you're invincible you always got time like you know you you don't have to worry about things you'll just get to things and then more and more life depends and demands of you and more and more you give and then you realize that you get lost in a shuffle and with these cards not only does it allow me to focus on my needs but it also allows me to explore my creativity which is why i chose to be inspired by these cards so i think this was it too 22 energy work with the outline of this mamiana so these are the two cards that inspired the specific portrait so I know because of the times and, you know, everything that's everything and the politics around it, it doesn't necessarily allow us to be mindful and actually put it into practice. So I wanted to put self-care into practice, not just with the cars, but also within the art. And that's how it transpired. And I actually do like the woman's body, like not only because I'm a woman, but I do like the curvature. I do like the softness of the woman's body. And I wanted to emulate that within this particular portrait. I chose outer space because you know I do astrology and and I love astrology. I love I, I feel like if school was taught to me at least mathematics even astrology not really astrology maybe astronomy in school i think i would have been more interested in subject matters that i just was not interested in if for example if you know anything about birth chart and how like the 12 houses fit into the wheel and each house has 30 degrees and like if math was taught to me through that lens i think i would have appreciated math a whole lot more then as a child then when i was a child i learned it typical way as everybody else and i just never was intrigued i felt like math and numbers was just another language i just did not understand but if it was learned through a different method i think i would have grasped it and appreciated math now would i be into geometry and uh, all those other maths probably not i would not enjoy calculus I, I probably would not be that girl 
However, I definitely would have been more into algebra. So there's that. Not trigonometry though. So that was the inspiration and that's what I drew. Outer space, again, because I'm into tarot and into astrology just made sense for me. Um, as well as I think maybe a new moon or full moon was going on around the time. So it just gave me that inspiration. But I really wanted it to invoke the energy of meditation, the energy of being there, the energy of being into your own divine feminine. So that's what I portrayed with the chakra points being on her chest, her being naked, and then having, you know, the buttocks. I wanted it to really re resemble a buttocks and not like a peen. So I gave it waist beads and I gave it this uh, allure, kind of like an aura. So that's what I wanted it to present. And then on top of the outlining of the mommy's body, I wanted it to give that pop-up effect that they are not all as one, like there is an outline of that. And I chose this light purple pinkish color for uh, the top of the head because I did run out of the brown, but also it invokes that crown chakra energy of being in your highest vibration, especially since it is the head. And I feel that be in your meditation, be active in your wellness and mental health. Like defend that thing like it's property like i do not have the emotional availability for this conversation for this discussion so i'm going to exit out i need my rest so i'm going to be off the clock for two hours like defend that because you have to have that for you because no one's going to advocate for you besides you and if you do need some you know little peen little cooch on the side that's your business because you've grown just protect yourself as you should and that's just that on that I, it, it's interesting because this is kind of off topic but hey since i'm sharing um it's interesting because i i i guess i discovered something where people are sexually insecure in the sense of or, or ego in sex which is more so framed around the whole like conquer in bed you know i'm so arrogant everybody wants to sleep with me especially with men but in a sense of like being vulnerable being there bare, being naked is a sense of like sexual ego especially if, if you don't have the skill set so you don't have the girth the length of the, the plump or whatever and a lot of people feel insecure around that and i think it, it has to do with you know religion and shame and guilt and it has to do with respectability politics and gender and all of that and something as natural as just being naked turns into something very grotesque turns into something very shameful turns into something very like my body is betraying me my body is somehow inherently bad and that's not the mentality we need to have around our own bodies, especially when it comes to something as precious as our mental health. Like, think about it. Our brains are basically what's run this ship called the body. Our brains is basically a sensory that allows us to interpret what's happening around us, right? The brain, right? The brain determines everything. The brain makes decisions. The brain cannot touch, but your hands can touch. Your brain cannot smell, but your nose can smell. Your brain cannot hear, your ears can hear, and so on and so forth. Your brain cannot taste, your tongue can taste. These are all sensory that your brain is computing, and it is helping you understand the world in and of itself. If you're not taking care of that motherboard called the brain, then you are doing yourself a disservice, right? If you're not taking care of your brain, you're definitely not taking care of your body. And you need your mind, body, and soul to have everything that is called the body work in one uniform manner. It has to be in oneness with self before you could be oneness with the community. So, yeah. <laughs> How did I feel about putting the pieces together? I just wanted to like talk and like, you know, lay stuff off my chest or whatever. There was nothing necessarily that I want to talk about besides the nutcracker. I really enjoyed it. And I also did do some pictures and some videos about, you know, my experience. So definitely check it out on my TikTok at Travel Tales. I'll put all that info, description box. As well. I talked about how I felt about it, talk about what I painted and how I'm gonna incorporate it. Like I said, I ended up incorporating the uh, card messages on the Oracle cards, but also like, it's important. And I know, just ride with me. I, just ride with me right now. I know people say life is short and it is, but also life seems long, right? And even with every year, once it hits Virgo season, which is like September, everybody's like, oh my God, the 
year is going by so fast. It's going by so fast. And it's like, when you recant your year, if you do recant and, and reflect on it, do you remember the things that you've done? Did you remember the time that you took space for yourself? Do you remember how you felt? And that's part of the reason why I have Travel Tales as a TikTok um, account to recant and, and have me remember about the things that I've done and, and how it made me feel. Kind of like a virtual updating scrapbook. But also because you don't want to live a life of just doing and not really existing, right? Not really communing, not really being. And because of the times, because of the politics, because of climate change, I feel like this is a time where the energies is just pushing us to be like, you know what? This has not been working for a very long time. I have to do something different. And that different looks like community building. That difference does look like a community garden. That difference does look like starting services and helping those around the community, checking up on grandpa, babysitting my uh, next door neighbor's child. This is these type of things because what we thought that would never come, which is like the end of unlimitless growth, is happening now. And a lot of people see it and know it and smell it in all the senses. They get it, but they're acting like what they're seeing is not it. They're being disillusioned by the truth, which is kind of bizarre to think. Being disillusioned by the truth. And it's because a lot of people have invested interest in the system being propped up even when it doesn't work. So it's going to take community leaders, think leaders, think tanks to come together, not on some bourgeoisie, hierarchy, me dictating to the others, but on some, how do we help our community? Because not only are we hurting, but everybody else is hurting. And we need to come together and help each other and look out for each other, support each other so we can weather what is to come. Because the way things look in, I have to be honest, I'm giving you inspiration, but I'm giving you real. I don't want nobody saying that I'm lying to them. I'm giving you inspiration, but I'm also giving you real. And inspiration only works if there is motivation to put action into plan. We can't pontificate a better tomorrow. We gotta actually make that better tomorrow today. So I believe that a lot of people are saying like, how do I help? How do I fix? How do I enhance because everybody sees like the turn of the tide but people are being disillusioned by the truth because they really believed too big to fail could never fail and now it's failing on not even just the global level but it's failing on an everyday basic infrastructure level social and physical it's failing and people know it but people are too scared to call it for what it is because once you say it for what it is you're validating its existence you're making it real but also you have to do something about it right so i'm gonna leave it here you know it's the 27th uh hopefully you have a great new year's eve hopefully you have a great new year um, if you're going to a party enjoy yourself be safe you don't want to live it up for new year's eve and then the actual new year you're not even here to experience it like what so let's make sure we make it fully over the hump into 2022 but um i think that's all i have thank you for uh coming through and, and participating and listening to me talk or doing your own art projects or even just you know learning something new and seeing how it fits into your own life but let me hit you with the shims plus before i go you can find me on facebook instagram twitter tumblr paint your truth paint your truth everywhere on instagram it is paint your truth underscore don't forget the underscore if you want to reach out to me via email because you would like to set up your own process painting workshop you can reach out to me via email at paint your truth dot art at gmail.com everything is in the description box down below please like share comment subscribe and I think I shall see you on the next video. And that should be somewhere in January 22. Um, with all that being said, y'all, be blessed, be enlightened, be loved, and out. Peace.